Hello friends, Ma Debbie here to talk about the book of Mark. Continuing on with my um, description of the Bible. Um, <clears throat> we're going to look at Mark tonight and Mark is the second of four canonical gospels. That means accepted as genuine by the Catholic Church. Uh, but it says, uh, you know, by the church, but generally speaking, we're talking about Roman Catholicism. <clears throat> It is a synoptic gospel. That just means it gives a synopsis of Jesus's life the same way that we saw in the book of uh, Matthew and we'll see in the book of Luke as well. Only the book of John has a different focus and a different way of, of uh, expressing the gospel. In these first three books, it is the story of Jesus's life, his mission, his teaching, healing, miracles, um, his um, death and resurrection, uh, sometimes his ascension. So what we want to ask, first of all, is who was Mark? So Mark wasn't one of the apostles, but there is some conjecture that Mark was a student of Peter and so carried on uh, and wrote uh, from the experience of Peter and his own experience, somewhat close to the time of Jesus' um, passing, of Jesus' crucifixion. So that's something to remember. There's not a, there is some inconclusive uh, information about who Mark was. But what we want to think about is that this book was chosen, first of all, because it aligns in the story with the other two synoptic gospels of Matthew and Luke, and also because <clears throat> it is um, said that he was um, part of the church tradition early on. So here it says Mark was worked with Barnabas, um, was actually John Mark worked with Barnabas, uh, the son of a prominent woman in the church in Jerusalem. So they're they're just you know, it's it's not a hundred percent certain who Mark is. Um, let me see what else it says here about him. So basically, the focus in Mark is the proclamation of who Jesus is, who he is as the Messiah what he does to show that he's the Messiah, how he fulfills the prophecies as we saw in Matthew. And so if we begin at the beginning of Mark, and the very first thing is the proclamation of John the Baptist and the baptism of Jesus. So it doesn't talk about his early life, it doesn't talk about Mother Mary, it talks just about who is Jesus and what is he doing here. Um, he's baptized, he has the temptation um, in the desert, very small, very small uh, paragraphs, many, many small paragraphs about what Jesus, who Jesus was and what he did. And so very quickly on page two of Mark, it goes into Jesus calling the disciples and starting to do his mission of healing and saving people and preaching. Um, so one after the another, Jesus calls people, he's answering their, their questions about fasting, he's answering the questions about the Sabbath, he's healing people, he's getting rid of spirits, he's doing all these things that we heard about in uh, the book of uh, Matthew. <clears throat> and one might ask, if we have Matthew, why do we need this? But the focus here is on um, repeating the story so that it creates more credibility or validity of who Jesus was. So let's see what's next here that I wanted to so the big thing is that he is talking about Jesus as the Messiah and all the things he did as the Messiah. So you could think of the book of Mark as proof that Jesus is who he says he is, the Messiah. And so again, we're seeing um, section after section of parables, of the so teachings of Jesus, of healing, of casting out demons, of... Um, of his uh, going up against the authorities of his time and being rejected in Nazareth, being um, rejected by the Sanhedrin, and then his miracles, feeding the 5,000, healings, all of that kind of thing. All the things that we see uh, in all three of the Gospels, um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So this, um, this, description is a little bit shorter than the one from Matthew because Matthew was one of the apostles and so he was right in there with Jesus telling the story um, from the get-go. Um, but with with Mark, it's a say a generation later, something like that, a generation later. 
and he's telling the story as other people told it to him. And again, these, these gospels were used from the beginning to proselytize, evangelize, to convince people. And so when you start reading this book of Mark and it's right away says Jesus is the Messiah and he, he starts doing things like teaching and healing and all of that, that it's very convincing of who he is. Um, so again, many, many teachings, healings, <clears throat> and then finally his entry into Jerusalem on um, what we call Palm Sunday. And going from there, he is questioning the authorities. He's getting himself in trouble with them, as we saw in uh, Matthew as well. And then he's still teaching and putting the, the Pharisees and Sadducees of his time kind of to shame. And so then, of course, making enemies of them. And in the, the end of Mark is what we would expect, which is he's foretelling that he is going to die. He's telling his apostles over and over again because they're not believing him that he's going to die. And he's, he's talking about the plot to uh, kill Jesus and how Judas betrayed him. So <clears throat> the last part of, the, of Mark is um, Jesus being handed over to be crucified the death and burial, <coughs> excuse me, and the resurrection of Jesus. And then it stops. Jesus commissions the disciples to go out, and then one short paragraph on the ascension of Jesus. And that's it. So nothing about Jesus' childhood, nothing about Mother Mary, only about the things that were prophesied or the things that support him as the Messiah. So it's a very, it's a kind of a quick read in terms of the length of the, of the book. It has 16 um, chapters in it, um, and many of them are quite short little synopses of the events that happened um, during Jesus' um, mission, mostly during his mission. And that's really it for Matthew, I mean for Mark, which is um, not to say that it's not important, but it is uh, another canonical synopsis of the life of Jesus to reinforce the story of Jesus. So I'll go on. This was a short one and easy enough to do, but I'll go on to um, the book of Luke and eventually the book of John, and I'll have a few other little lessons for you in between that I've been thinking about. Okay? Thanks. Bye-bye.